Okay. Okay. So for uh, so for my folks here, I'm gonna give these guys a quick intro, and then just like last time, because the Zoom quality isn't so great, uh, we'll talk for about five ten minutes, and then you guys can log off, and then I'll be recording our segments here, and then post those uh, later today for you guys to to see them. For you guys that are here, you guys either hang out or. If you haven't had any time yet, I would say for a good thing is to spread over there, over there, and just sort of start taking some looks at things. Really great lighting right now if you guys want to take photos, and, and they actually, it's high tide, so the channels are super inundated. If you looked at my videos before, they were they were basically mud channels. They were, it was empty, so it's a great, great contrast. So um, uh, I'll start spieling, but if you guys wanted to start taking some photos, meandering observations, what kind of critters you see around, all that kind of good stuff for your characterization. That's great. Okay. So you guys, you guys online, uh, uh, hope everything's okay. And you guys can hear me okay still, yeah? Yep. Yeah, okay, good, okay, great. So um, I'll just show you real quick. Again, the quality isn't so great when we do Zoom, but, but just so you can see right here, we have so uh, we're looking, so that's Santa Barbara is that way. So we're looking up coast, right? Westward basically. And uh, this area right here that you can see there's straight in front of me on the other side of the bank, there's an egret over there. That's a, a berm. That's Franklin Creek on the other side of that. So, so the big levee is, is, is channelizing Franklin Creek so it can't meander any which way. But between there and us, this is the Ash Avenue restoration. So these days, people here call it the Carpinteria um, Salt Marsh Nature Park. But um, this is the this is the restoration that was the Ash Avenue restoration. So <clears throat> just to give you a sense, uh, to make sure we understand this again, you guys should watch all my videos. You see that car that's driving right now? There's actually a road that's coming from over here to over here. Now that road was. Um, uh, put in originally in the 50s as an oil and gas to go to an exploratory well in the sort of partway through the salt marsh. And then it's just been extended to get access to the, um, this development here, the sandy land, this, this housing complex that's between the vegetated marsh and the um, sandy uh, beach area. Okay, so ocean's over there, Santa Barbara's over there. Obviously, the, the mountains here, the Los Padres Wilderness, San Inez Mountains up there. Um, and so uh, this area is, um, was the restoration here started in 97. Well, actually it, it all took place in 97. There's a few plants that were planted later, but, but all the manipulations happened in um, basically summer of 19, summer, fall of 1997. Um, looks like there's a Willet or somebody walking, walking along the banks there. So, okay, so, um, so again, your quality isn't super great on the, on the Zoom. So, uh, I'll I'll record this uh, with my students here so you guys can get a better shot. But but just want to make sure you guys got got the lay of the land over there. So we have farther over there more salt marsh. Here we have uh, urbanization. On the upper edges we have urbanization. On the edge right now, look in the sun. You probably can't see anything. Is is also uh, urbanization. A key aspect of this is going to be the mobile home park over there, which historically was flooding. Generally speaking, it was it was most healthy farther over there. And as we moved closer and closer to the, the middle of the town, um, say in the 70s and 80s, this area was, was highly degraded or, or comparatively speaking, much more degraded and, and not as well functioning as the area in the middle. So this is Ash Avenue, let me put this down now. Um, and so, so the area where we're standing, where all, all the students are, I'll spin this around a little bit. So this is an interpretive area. And as you can tell, this is a bit, uh, it'd be hard to tell when you guys are, are um, home trying to watch this, but, but we're on an elevated um, uh, area. So there's a series of nature, uh, of uh, recreational trails here, de decomposed granite trails, as well as like this area that, that's right here. This is a, um, an overlook, right? This is sort of an interpretive overlook area. And so this is a place where we can, uh, school groups can meet up, a public, uh, 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 you know, exercise groups can meet up, bird watchers, all this and that, super cool. Now we first planted this area, this whole area, I'm gonna spin around to a 360, this whole area, 
uh, was low visibility. I, I could do this 360 and it, we'd see the horizon basically, or, or almost the horizon all the way around. Now what's happened is um, all, all, all this vegetation, this coyote bush and all this stuff, all these, all these shrubs, all these upland um, plants have grown up, which is great, which is what we wanted, right? So 20 years later, we have much, a much more um, a high relief uh, vegetation community. Uh, but just to be clear, we're on a bluff that's about, oh, I don't know, 10, 15 feet or so right here above the marsh plain down below us. So it gives us some perspective. It allows us to see, um, you know, so it's great for bird watching, that kind of stuff. We can look a bit down on the marsh. So it's a great interpretive site, um, et cetera. It also means that this is acting as something of a buffer, right? So when this floods, when this area floods, the main um, uh, town area is, isn't going to flood because we have this, this elevated area protecting us. So, okay. So, uh, so we're here at Ash Avenue. So this was done in 97. This was, there were, there were a few little minor things done before, but the big story is that, um, the big story is that uh, most of the efforts that were, that were done before this 97 was, uh, was, were not particularly aggressive. This was the first real restoration effort. Up to that point, there was a few changes here and there with flood control people, uh, but mostly it was, it, was an, it was an impact of increasing stressors and inc declining ecological function, that kind of stuff. So this 97 project first kicked off this idea that, hey, we can really do some manipulations and we can really start to recover the system, even though it's a relatively small system, even though uh, it does, doesn't get a lot of attention like say our wetlands in Los Angeles or in San Francisco, or even some of the ones in Ventura County for that matter, um, it, it nevertheless is an important place to, to uh, you know, work on restoring and, and gain function. The other key thing to just make sure we're all on the same page is, is about half of the marsh over there is controlled by, um, uh, is a unit of the University of California uh, Natural uh, Reserve System. And so it's Carpinteria Salt Marsh State Reserve or Car Carpinteria Salt Marsh um, Research Reserve. Um, and that is maintained by the University of California primarily for research. They might say some stuff about education and outreach and they're not anti-education by any means, but it's not really, there aren't really major education outreach projects. An area like Ash Avenue really helps in that case because the UC reserves are really about doing scholarship and having places you can put out instruments and nobody will disturb them. So keep the public away primarily from the UC research reserves. But this interpretive park is a place that's open 24 hours a day. Anybody can come. And, and, and if you guys were to come here or next time you come here, you'll see there's all these interpretive signs around, right? So, so it's a place to educate the public that otherwise might have a hard time getting into the main core of the marsh that's over there. Um, so, sorry, somebody's trying to call me. We're still good, right? You guys can still hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good, okay, good. So, um, uh, what was I saying? So, uh, yeah, anyway, so, so this park serves an important outreach in, in education, community buy-in, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and it just it was, was extra sort of whipped cream on the top that it's a place that, that showcases the, an ecological restoration, right? This would have been great in the main marsh as well, but, but this has allowed the public to see over the years the transition and the change of the estuary uh, conditions in this particular site. Um, the main things that were done here in this particular restoration, uh, 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 deepening the channels, sort of, sort of tweaking the tidal channels, making them more natural, cleaning out some sediment, et cetera. Uh, improving the, the, the tidal floodgate at the back, which was um, an area that uh, was, was causing problems. Again, I mentioned that the mobile home park that was flooding and things of that nature. So it was dealing with that problem. Um, and then it was also about introducing some more diversity in terms of the plant community. We've talked about before about wetlands having this jurisdictional area where we, we have the legally defined area of what a, a wetland is or where a wetland is, which is great. But sometimes our legal mandates stop right there because we have protections for wetlands, but not for the transition, not for the upland, not for the other areas. And so, um, so the idea here was not just restore the marsh plain, the vegetated, the salt marsh community, but also work on restoring the 
the terrestrial vegetation and the transition. And so this, this area here serves multiple purposes, overview, uh, a place for birds to build nests, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, yeah, so I'll also say this was also the first place when we talked about those trematode parasites that, that we've discussed as great examples of indicators for functioning. Um, the, the method had been developed in other places, but this was the first real, real test. I, I did, we did some of the tests at some of my sites at Magoo, um, but as far as a site that was designed from the get-go to assess the trematodes, this was the first published in the, in, the, in the academic literature, the first published demonstration that those trematode parasites can be a good guide for restoration or a good assessment of restoration performance. Okay, so yeah, so this manipulation was done. What happened really quickly is uh, we, we, we blocked off the tidal um, con connectivity, which is what we do in these, in these situations, uh, so that we don't have the tides coming in and out pump the water out and then do your stuff, do your driving your bulldozers, doing your excavators, changing the physical architecture of the, of the marsh. Uh, and, then, um, and then after a couple months, when everything's good, uh, you, you remove the dam or, or you allow the tide waters to come back in and, and you have connectivity again. And so, so the idea is sort of like if you're doing a surgery and you, and you, you uh, blocked off someone's artery or veins or whatever it is so they don't bleed while you're doing the operation on the organ once you've finished the operation on the organ you let the clamps go and the blood comes back and and keeps the organ doing its due so as long as that's a really short period of time the organ doesn't die and you can get in there and do manipulation so that's the basic approach that was taken here and and taken in existing salt marshes so again this wasn't existing site it was just heavily degraded so this wasn't a de novo creation this was more along the lines of enhancement, but it was very, very aggressive enhancement. Um, so that's it. Yeah, so that's Ash Avenue. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna walk around and stop, make a bunch of stops and, and talk about different elements and things um, and all that kind of good stuff. But this is, this is the introduction to our Ash Avenue salt marsh restoration here in uh, part of the Carpentria salt marsh complex. Do you guys have any questions for me as, we're, as you're sitting here and seeing this cool wetland behind me? No, okay, all right, cool. So um, it's all good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, kill our call then in a second. Um, uh, tell a couple a couple of reminders though. So uh, I've pushed back the due date for this thing for the, for this wetland characterization to next Friday. Okay, so it's not due tonight. So you, you have time to talk with your group members after you hear from him or her who is here hopefully. Again. Uh, do watch all my videos that I posted, the, the background videos. If you've not watched those, watch those now, please. Um, but your, your characterization is due next week. It is the full characterization. So it is both what, um, what is the site now and also what might we do or mo what, mo what might you propose here at Ash Avenue. And I'll also allow you to, guys to add in to the adjacent parcel right over there, which we call Basin 1. So, so what might we want to do to this site still? What we might what we want to do to the next little parcel over? And that all that's going to be due next week, as well as your one to four minute video overview thing. As with last time, I'll be taking some pictures uh, today or after we're done today, maybe depending on how it goes and posting those up. So if you guys don't have a group member here, if someone was sick or somebody couldn't make it, you guys still have access to some of the some visual uh, materials. I've also put a few links um, on on our, our site overview page um, that might be useful. So different plans, etc. Malibu, tons of information, tons of background information. Ash Avenue here, even though it's a research reserve, not as much. There's still definitely still, still some. And so as we going for as we're going forward, we're looking at sites that are less and less well documented in terms of a, a publication history and all this and that. And again, that's not good or bad. That's just reality. So um, but so do check out some of those references. Note that I have a quiz that's due today at five. That if you watch those intro videos, this, you know, this, et cetera, you'll be able to do it. But, but take that very brief five question quiz today, please. And then the other one, I just want to remind you guys next week, one of our quizzes for next week is going to be simply to show evidence that you guys voted. So I have my, where's my bald head? I have my uh, sticker right here. So if you guys have a sticker, if you guys have a picture, I don't want to see your votes, but but you know just your uh, that you that you got a ballot, or if you guys go to vote in person, whatever, it's all good. Just some little shot, so, somewhere to, to say that you guys participated. Again, I don't care how you participate, but 
want you guys to participate in the vote. If, there, if there's an issue with that, if you have a problem with that, send me an email and we can we can talk about why that's a problem for you. But but that's going to be one of the quizzes. So if you guys do go vote in person, whatever, make sure you snap your picture out in front of the polling booth or, or something out of the polling location or take a picture of your ballot before you put it in the mail, sealed so I can't see the votes, that kind of stuff. Um, so that's what's going on. So make sure you guys reach out to your group members after today so that you guys can have a, a plan when you're going to get together and divide up the work. And again, as before, when you turn the video in and the and the, the document in, it's just one copy per, per group. You don't each have to turn one in. Cool. Questions? Anybody questions for I uh, for I we kill our little Zoom intro to Ash Avenue here? Professor. Yeah. I do have a question. How are we supposed to get in contact with the rest of our group? So it's it. So you get, you guys should be able to email them through. I, I can repost people's emails, but you guys should be able to email them through Canvas. Okay. Thank you. So uh, yeah. So so um that, that that's like the simplest way. Um, but, uh, if you guys can't do that, which I think you can, but if it's some a problem, let me know. And I can, I can email each group, I suppose, so that you guys have everybody's email in your group. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? All right, buddy. You guys have a safe Halloween. We're going to have a great Halloween. Look, we even have a Halloween. We have a, a hollow, a salt marsh fairy here. You guys are totally missing out. Uh, clearly, I like pirates, so I'm a pirate, but you guys are missing out. So sorry you can't be here, but watch the videos, and you guys have a safe Halloween. Thank you. Next See you guys. Ray. Okay. Okay, I think we just killed this. Wait, did we kill this? No, we're still here. Why is this thing still going? All right, you guys can pop on over. We'll start our tour in a sec. Why is this guy still gone? I'm sorry.